We got a phone call. They were growing uh, cannabis in this one, so the uppers caught on fire on ours. Because the fire's upstairs. Oh my god, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Hey, my name is Mark Harvey. In this video, you're going to learn how to take a complete disaster and turn it into nice, lovely commercial uh, units and residential as well. So, uh, Bobby and Anita are going to show us around this property. We're going to be talking through how to take things that like were just a loss and a problem that most people would have quit, and they turn it around into a success. Let's go and have a look and see how. So that's next door where the fire started. <laughs> uh, it's this annex, and then it's spread over to our side. So we can't do any repairs to ours or put a new roof on ours until we get a new roof on that and they sort out that dividing wall. Yeah, no, no. But what happened is they, they were growing, I think, weed in the top floor when the fire brigade came in the, in, the, in the loft and the first floor. So it's basically from that, it's spread over into our loft and then the first part of the ceiling on the first floor is dropped. Yeah. So when you go up, you'll see the damage. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you came across this in the first place. So the one we own on the left, yeah. it was just um, commercial property. Uh, it didn't sell an auction. So I know the auctioneer, he approached me after. We put a bid in um, two and a half years ago. Um, so that was so literally just before, just before lockdown. lockdown, right? Just before lockdown, <laughs> February before lockdown. So then that, did that affect you in any way? Yeah, it was just uh, hard finding contractors because everybody just stopped, shut up shop. Oh, so you wanted to do the conversion straight away? So well, yeah, it was commercial. Uh, it was an estate agent downstairs and uh, it was offices um, behind and upstairs. But they were actually, um, they were doing some illegal activities, the girls that run it. We found out they were escort girls and they were in with the Albanian army growing a bit of weed in the upstairs as well so it had a lot of problems um serial entrepreneurs yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah. so then so what was your plan with it when you first took it on just to convert it into flats um and uh get some rental income mm -hmm. that was it uh, we converted it into flats um, a big uh, upstairs three bedroom flat studio at the bottom uh, and then we had to get a new tenant Changes. for down, uh, downstairs. But what happened after that? So it was tenanted and then Christmas of 21, uh, we got a phone call um, from the tenants. They were growing uh, cannabis in this one. So the uppers caught on fire on ours and they flooded the downstairs. So the downstairs, is all damp, it needs to be taken back to brick and redone. It's mainly water damage downstairs. Water damage downstairs. Yeah. And upstairs you'll see is a mess. But you can see it's even worse on this side because they don't have a roof and the first floor is gone. Mm -hmm. um, so... But then your first floor is no good as well. My first floor, the, the, the floor space is okay, but the ceiling where the loft is, it needs to be replaced. You'll see when we go up because where the fire was, some of it's dropped and it's just you'll mm. see when we go up. Mm. We thought everything would be okay because our insurance would cover it. In April we found out that the insurance they'd only pay 40% of the damage. Wow. So we've been fighting with the solicitors um, and the insurance trying what we can to maximize that and we're looking at different options with next door now. Well, you know what, I've driven over the flyover so many times and seen this fire damage and then Bobby told us it was it was yours and Aww. oh bless you, it's horrific, it's horrific. I was at the States that time when you banged me. Really? And I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? I didn't realise it was that bad till I got home. I thought, oh, maybe it was just a bit of, yeah, you know, a bit fire. Of fire. It wasn't and too fire. bad, but then when you see the damage, it's just... <laughs> It's ridiculous. And you hear about these things, don't you? It's like, this is a horror story of property. Yeah, and you see it yeah. in the kind of press, but then when it, you actually see it in reality. It just shows, oh. do you know what? Having insurance is massive. Like, if we didn't have insurance, like, I know we only got partly paid, but still, we got something. Yeah. You know, we could have got yeah. nothing at all. It would have been a lot worse. To her. We'll celebrate all wins, must And then, um, yeah. because of celebrate all wins. Things. What I would say to people is, with our insurance policy, we took it out when we bought the building, and uh, we advised them everything, you know, who was here, the leases, whatever, what we'd done to the building. Um, 
but we didn't read all the finer print of the the, the declarations you need to make to the insurance company. So some of them were, you've got to tell them the tenancy, who's in there, when they're leaving, change of occupancy, if it's unoccupied, all these details. And we didn't tell them all the ins and outs. And that's why they didn't pay the full amount. And we fought for months with them and it's been a long process. But all I would say is, what advice would be, with your insurance policy, because this is this is like um, a, a, what do you call it? A, a freak accident, a fire. It's like a, a lightning hitting your building. So these are like 0.001 percent, but those times cost you, which we're learning the hard way. Okay, so we've got some options here, but so what, what is it you want to turn it into once you sorted all of this stuff out? So once we sorted it all out, I think um, speaking, just looking at the layout of the building. I think we can get um, minimum six flats, potentially up to eight if we get what we one, want. One beds or? Yeah. Yeah, one, one bed beds. flats. One beds, but not tiny ones, not studios, one beds. Fully, fully flats, yeah? Yeah, full yeah. flats. Yeah, living not... room, kitchen, yeah. Yeah. bedroom, yeah? Yeah, so about, I reckon about 500 square foot per flat. Okay, good. And uh, so what, you want to rent them out or is there another strategy? So the, we want to do serviced accommodation. So this is, would be a good tester for us to do uh -huh. serviced accommodation here. And the do location's all of... really good because it's really central to town as well. We've got the hospital which is literally down the road, so, so I think serviced accommodation could work really well here. Yeah, and okay. around here there ain't too much parking as we've... No. no. As, as a lot of so this road just... leads into Cardiff City Centre. Yeah, but the parking here, you get like eight spaces here. Yeah, and you've got the front as well, where that's, it, that's oh, first yeah, come yeah, is yeah. first served. We're yeah. parked at the front. Yeah, but then this would be like designated parking yeah. for yeah. Like this, yeah? Yeah. So you're looking to refinance? Once we've uh, completed it, yeah, we'll refinance. To pull some money out? Yeah, we will yeah? do. Awesome. Well, that make it all worth your while, won't it, after all of this? Well, hope so, yeah. <laughs> so what value have you been looking at? I think if we get what we want, um, we can probably get a combined value of about 900. Ah, okay, good. Yeah, maybe more. Yeah. Depending. If we get what we want. Yeah, depending on what you refinance it as as well. Thank you for inviting us down here to see it. And I'm looking forward to see how this turns out. So we come back, keep us updated with the pictures and everything, videos. No problem. And uh, as we always say, you've got to do the right thing for the right reason. Now, why is that? That's the only way to discover your true potential. Boosh.